go to Emedio. We're going to change gears. We're going to go Mary Puts. So I've got Emedio's question. Then we've got Sloan. And then I've got a question from Octavio, which is I'm probably going to cover. Um, well, I don't know. But anyway, let's talk about Emedio. I, I was going to say we're going to cover it during Sloan's question. We're probably going to cover it at that point. Emedio's question. Related to the Mary Puts, radioactive trading techniques as discussed in the blueprint, the full approach that we use with the 12 different income methods as well. Media says, Mike, I'd like your comments about married puts management when the market is falling and your expectations are continued that way. Uh, one could call the trade inverts. One could call the trade inverts and you miss the recovery. Or you could use income method number nine, but I think, Excuse me, this is good just if you are very confident in a recovery. You're absolutely right, short time. Or you could sell 20% of the stocks to neutralize the trade in the short time. Yes, this is, I believe, mentioned in the exiting the RPM chapter of the blueprint. I'm not positive on that. Um, I think it is. I wanted to put it in. I just don't remember if we put it in. Um, I'm going to go to my position, as I mentioned, joking to myself. Did I put it in here? Please tell me I did. Yep. So on September 10th, when the market sort of had that little fake recovery after the big decline on the fourth of media, I had, oh, there it is. Okay, that's why it looked off to me. I had opened AEM at 83.75, bought the September, I'm sorry, bought the February 90 put for 14.30. And immediately I figured, well, with only eight days to go to September 18th expiration, I'm going to sell the 90 strike call for 75 cents. At one point, I'm just going to expire this first real quick. That would have been on the 18th. So use my more information button to expire my expired option on the call. It's going to lower my cost basis. We're going to take a look at the effective risk of the AEM position. As you can see, of course, it's down 6.7%. This stock was down as low as minus 11%. From where I started, but my loss was only about 3% on the position. So before we go any further, Medio, let's take a look at the chart. And we're going to go one month again. All right. So on September 10th, this is roughly where I got in. The, the, oh, 83.75. Yeah, so I, I'm right. Okay, so in any case, a few days after I opened the position, what did it do? It did exactly what I wanted for a Marion put position. It moved up the 3 to 6% I expect it to make in the first 20 to 60 days. Just happened to happen in the first two days. Didn't breach my put strike price. So I didn't roll the put to lower the risk further immediately. I wish I would have sold the 90 call here when it was at 285 instead of selling it right away, which I never do, and got 75 cents. But hey, that expired worthless. Then we did this. Now, this was a little bit of a fake out here. I wasn't sure what was going on, but when I saw this, this is right around when that question of what do I do now happens. I'm holding the 90 put. The stock's fallen to 81. It's not down bad from where I bought it in media at 83.75, but then we got into this range and here was the big question. It's now down to 75. I'm at about a 3.4, 3.5% loss on the position, still manageable. One of the things that Ernie talks about in the article for buying calls and buying puts on power options, the Bollinger Bands for buying options, he says, when you see a breakout below the lower Bollinger Band, and you see it close below that the next day, that's usually termed as a Bollinger Band breakout. It's usually an indication the stock's going to continue to fall. This didn't have it. So I was expecting it to rise back up as it did. Now, I'm not saying I've hit the bottom yet. I'm not saying more can happen. But here's where Emedio's at. Here's where his question was, exactly where I'm facing sort of with this position now. I have a choice to use income method Number nine, if I think I've hit the bottom, what am I going to do? I'm going to take the profit out of this put. I'm going to roll it down to another put and receive a credit. 
So what is one of the ways you might consider managing a stock position that falls against you? But you want to stay in the stock. Well, you buy more shares of stock at the lower price. You're averaging down, but you're putting more money into the position. Here, I'm effectively averaging down with income method number nine, but I'm taking money out of the position. I'm lowering my cost basis to take better advantage of the recovery without putting more money into the position. Now, Medio says, at this point, if I'm still bearish, will I consider, so stock plus put combination, will I consider selling the stock and effectively leaving a long put or changing the delta up to be positive to the bearish by selling 20 or 30% of the stock? Now, I don't think so, unless I'm really expecting the stock to fall back down to 60, well, it hasn't been there, but go down to 68, 67, uh, $62. Honestly, if that's my expectation, I might just use income method number 12 in that case, rather than limit the upside exposure if I'm wrong and it goes back up. Okay. So it's a tough one, but I think in that exiting the RPM chapter, we do talk about if you're expecting a decline, you could sell the stock, leave the put open. Of course, it's risky if the stock recovers because you could quickly lose 70, 80% on the long put that you've opened, but you retained more value of the stock immediately. Absolutely. You could use income method number 12, but that would be if I caught it here, really there. Really, if I caught it right here, that would have been the time to do it. Right when it dropped below the 20 day moving average and I started to see that negative MACD crossover, that would have worked. But then, what do I got to do? What did we talk about at the beginning of the presentation with the concept of why did VIX calls and UVXY calls and UVXY itself? not work so well on the decline we've seen in September, except for on those two days, because it's been a gradual decline. This is a fast decline, but when it starts to move back up, once it ends, it ends. I'm not saying this has ended. All right, We might see a little hiccup here and go back down. I agree. But if my projection is the stock is going to continue to fall, I might use that IM number 12 if I caught it in time. I don't think I caught it in time on this one, so I'm not using it. Or when it starts to recover, and I think I've hit my bottom lines, I think I've hit the bottom, my support there, then I'm going to use income method number nine. Not going to try to gamble around too much by trying to affect delta by selling a portion of the shares, 20% of the shares, 30% of the shares to put myself into a negative delta at that time then look to add them back in at a lower price. I don't think I'm going to do that. Okay. But I tend for our customers and for the posting of the positions that I have on the Fusion portfolio at Radioactive Trading, to keep things simple, I follow the rules in the blueprint to a T. So I would use the nine if I think I've hit the bottom. I'd use 12 if I think I'm going to catch the bottom. That's where you see in the track record some of those positions where I was long stock the entire time. The stock was down 60%. I made 5%. I think there's one where the stock is down 35% and I made 8 or 9%. I can't remember exactly. That's using 12 because I caught it at the right time. But if it's down here at the bottom, unless I really think it's going to have another strong decline as it's already have, I'm not going to look at 12. And I think I've been at the bottom, then I'm going to use nine. Uh, Sam adds, if you buy a straddle at the lower Bollinger Band, then you can be in a stock repair and catch uh, the downside more if the sell-off continues. But you know with that married put structure, Sam, because of where my 90 put is and my cost basis right now, a debit of 93, I'd lower the put first before doing the stock repair, that income method number five on top of it. So if I just did it now and it goes back to one of these, I'm going to be at a loss in the position because of the high cost basis that I have in that put. I want to take that down first, then move forward. Uh, Fernando asks, um, I am number nine swap, real value buying with time value. Is there a way to mitigate this problem? Yeah, check out the uh, combining income method chapters of your blueprint. And you'll see there's some of the combinations that we use with income method number nine, such as adding income method number one to it to hedge some of that, or income method number six I like to use in conjunction from time to time with income method number nine. If you don't know what I'm saying uh, with all these numbers, don't worry about it. They're just different adjustments that we make in the married put position following the rules outlined in the blueprint. We don't go in depth into all of the income methods in the blueprint because that's not fair to current blueprint owners. 
But if you check out the blueprint there, it gives the full description of the proper structure for the married put, the hows and whens to use each of the 12 different income methods. Why are there 12 different income methods? Because some work best when the stock is up. Some work best if the stock has moved down, as we were just a little bit talking about with the media, or you're planning that it might move down. Fear in the market, what we talked about in some of the earlier discussions. And at the same time, if the stock stays stagnant, there are income methods that I can use that can help lower my risk, even though the stock's not meeting the expectations I had when I originally opened the position. All right, so you want to make sure you check that out there. That's uh, And if you go to the link there for the Blueprint, of course, there's a link where you can see the full table of contents for the Blueprint course. It's all electronics. So you don't need to worry about shipping. Uh, so you can check that out in the Products tab. Uh, the power store and power options or in the products tab course on radioactive trading and view the table of contents. And I think Kurt even lets you listen to the Kurt recorded the first chapter for free there uh, of the blueprint course.